hello farmers welcome back to our youtube channel so today we shall be discussing in detail the seven common types of pig diseases that affect pigs so welcome tune in and please watch to the end as there is so much to learn about pigs and the diseases that affect the animals so the first disease we'll talk about is african swine fever which is a highly contagious and deadly viral disease affecting both domestic and wild pigs of all ages. So African swine fever is not zoonotic. When you say zoonotic, we mean it cannot be transmitted to humans, but humans can be in a position to transfer the disease from one affected pig to another. So the first thing we shall discuss is the mode of transmission. How is African swine fever transmitted from one pig to another? You know, recall these diseases viral that is it is caused by a virus and because viruses are very tiny they can stick even to clothing shoes you know they can stick to humans and when you move from one affected pig to another or one infected pig to another you will be in a position to cause or to make the pig contract the disease so this disease is basically transmitted by ticks when ticks bite an infected animal and then they drop to the ground and bite a healthy animal, they transmit the virus to the uninfected animal. So that way, the animals get infected. And we have also said when people move from one farm to another, they carry the viruses with them in their clothing, in their shoes. The viruses are embedded or they stick on their clothing. And the moment they come into contact with healthy animals, they transmit the disease. So the next thing we need to understand is what are the symptoms or how do you know that an animal has been affected by the African swine fever? So these are the things to look for so that you can be able to determine whether the animal is affected by African swine fever. The first symptom is lack of appetite, red skin, bloody diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding, blue skin, and necrosis. So when you say that an animal has necrosis, is the presence of lesions. Lesions like the animal has scabby patches, some of them are black and others are white. That is, the animal will be having black patches on, on the skin. So, so that is an indicator that the animal is suffering from African swine fever. Another symptom is that the affected animal can abort upon infection. So, you know, the female pig that is the sow will definitely abort when it is infected with African swine fever. The preventive measures include ensure that you install biosecurity measures on your, that is on your farm, that is a solution of copper sulfate solution, so that when you move from one farm to another, you dip your shoes into that biosecurity solution and it will definitely kill the virus. You can also, you can also make sure that you clean your farm and spray some disinfectants on the, the animals so that you can curb the spread of this African swine fever. Remember, when an animal is infected with African swine fever, the animals can die if they are not culled, that is, if the infected animals are not culled, and even the remaining stock can die simply because they have been affected by the disease. So these are very, very dangerous disease since it is caused by a virus, and it's important to recall that prevention is better than cure because viral diseases do not definitely have a cure. So the best way of controlling this disease is by preventing it. And we have already discussed the various ways we can use to prevent the spread of this. So the second disease we shall talk about is foot and mouth disease, which is also caused by a virus. And there are over seven main serotypes of foot and mouth disease, which in return have many strains. To be precise, they have more than 60 subtypes of the virus. So what, what does this mean? This means that it is very, very difficult to develop an effective vaccine because all those strains have different spike proteins and it becomes relatively very hard to develop a, that is a working vaccine. So the symptoms of foot and mouth disease include lameness, excessive salivation, blisters, loss of appetite, fever, and death in severe cases. It is important to understand that this disease usually affects animals during the wet season or in some cases during winter. 
And therefore, even if vaccination is the most effective method of controlling the disease, it's important to vaccinate the animals before the onset of winter or before the onset of the rainy season. Furthermore, because there are different serotypes of this disease, then the vaccine that must be developed must be multivalent, which simply means that this vaccine should be in a position to destroy or kill, or maybe, yeah, let's use the word destroy or kill, various, you know, serotypes of this disease. It is also important to note that this disease also attack other farm animals such as goat, cattle, sheep, such. So if you want to completely control this disease, you also have to vaccinate other farm animals which are living in the farm where the pig's sty is located. And there's no cure for this disease. And if an animal is actually infected with this disease, it should be culled. When you talk about culling, Culling is that process of slaughtering or killing infected animals so that you can stop the spread of a certain disease. So the best way of preventing this disease is by vaccinating the animals before the onset of the winter. So every farm out there should always remember that the best way of preventing some of the most common pig diseases is by number one, proper feeding, number two, proper hygiene. So the next disease that we shall discuss is salt poisoning. And this disease is caused by improper feeding. So salt poisoning occurs because of improper feeding in pigs when pigs are fed with restaurant leftover or with food leftovers. Remember the food leftovers have a lot of sodium chloride. That is the salt that we humans take. But because pigs do not completely metabolize this sodium chloride, it can cause problems to the pigs. When pigs take a lot of sodium chloride, they appear to be blind, they lose their balance, they start falling over, and they vomit a lot. One of the ways of preventing salt poisoning is to ensure that the pigs are fed with the right diet, that is, the right amount of food, the right type of food, the right type of salt, so that they do not contract salt poisoning. So the next big disease that we shall discuss is mastitis. So mastitis is a bacterial disease present in sores, that is female pigs, and it has symptoms such as reduced milk production, high body temperature, and loss of appetite. The disease is of course caused by a bacteria, as we had earlier mentioned, and this disease affects the mammary glands, where there is a skin discoloration around the teats. One of the ways of controlling this disease is by the use of antibiotics, but the most effective way of controlling mastitis is using oxytocin and corticosteroids as prescribed by a veterinary. Remember, this disease is caused by, that is, lack of adequate sanitation, and if the pig is lactating, that is, if the pig has piglets, some of the teats may not be completely suckled by the piglets. So that milk left over in the teats will definitely clog and it will definitely allow bacteria to grow in there and cause mastitis. Okay, another way of controlling mastitis is making sure that there is proper hygiene in furrowing houses and healthy nutrition during the pregnancy stage is offered to the pig. And recall, mastitis causes damage of the teats, that is, damage to the mammary glands. Therefore, this disease reduces the number of piglets which can be successfully weaned by one sow. So this is actually a very big problem as some of the piglets may die due to lack of adequate nutrients from the pig as they do not suckle enough or they do not get enough nutrients from the sow. So the next diseases that we'll discuss are respiratory diseases. And the most common symptoms of respiratory diseases are coughing, sneezing, heavy breathing, reduced growth, and even mortality. So to treat this type of disease, antibiotics are often given in feeds or in water as injectable substances. So there are those certain environmental factors that predispose animals to respiratory diseases. Some of these factors include poor ventilation, construction of the pigsty, because if a pigsty is 
constructed in the direction of the predisposing weeds, definitely the animals will suffer from a lot of cold and initially contract pneumonia. But it is important to know that some forms of pneumonia can be prevented through vaccines, but it is important to identify the strain present on a farm so that we can be able to fight against it effectively. Because it's important to know that whenever we are treating diseases, we should include or we should kind of involve veterinary so that they can be able to accurately pin out the type of disease which is affecting the animal and give the right vaccine or the right antibiotics. Another disease we shall look at, but these are not technically diseases, but these now are organisms which are capable of causing diseases are parasites. So today we shall discuss two parasites which actually affect pigs and the first one we shall talk about are roundworms. So roundworms are the most common parasites found in pigs and they live in the gut. They have a worm-like appearance and cause weight loss in young pigs. Then they cause emaciation, that is general emaciation. The pigs have stunted growth and they can also lead to blockage of the gut. And when the gut is blocked, definitely the animals suffer from constipation and die. So even if the animals do not die from roundworm infestation, those that survive have general emaciation and they will eventually die or their growth is permanently reduced. So roundworms can be eliminated by number one, regular deworming. Deworming can be done through drenching whereby now solid or liquid medicine is introduced through the mouth of the animal. And another way of controlling roundworms is making sure that the animals live in a clean pigsty because the excreta from an infected animal may be fed on by a healthy animal and in the process, the pigs contract roundworms. Oh, the next parasite we shall talk about are tapeworms. So tapeworms live in the muscles of the affected pigs and they cause pig measles. The pigs do not seemingly look affected, but they can experience pain and have difficulties in moving around. The pig meat, which is affected by these tapeworms, is very, very dangerous for humans, and it should not be consumed if it is improperly cooked. There is no cure for pigs which have been infected with tapeworms, but farmers should take preventive measures such as practicing good hygiene, stopping pigs from wandering off, and double fencing farms that near game parks or farms which are close to other livestock so that the pigs do not interact with the other animals and in the end contract tapeworms. Farmers, the last disease we shall talk about today is malnutrition. Malnutrition is the most common pig disease and it is easily recognizable because the animal grows slowly and are visibly thin. In healthy pigs, the only bones that should be visible are the shoulder blades, that is the scapula. If farmers can notice the backbone, the hips or the ribs, then the pigs are too thin. Pigs have a great advantage of growing rapidly. And so if a farmer notices that a pig is growing too slowly, it is mostly because the pig is malnutritioned, that is the pig is suffering from malnutrition. Malnutrition occurs because of insufficient or poor quality feeds. Growing pigs need more feed and of higher quality than adults. Lactating sows also need more high quality feeds to produce milk, otherwise they'll start to lose weight. Farmers, for today we shall discuss those seven types of diseases that affect pigs. But it is important to know that prevention is the most efficient way of avoiding pig diseases and other health problems. It is important to know which are the main measures to take for disease prevention in pig farms. While some diseases or health problems are preventable, others cannot be treated. And hence, they become highly damaging for the entire pig stock and some of them even transmitted to humans. Some of the most important measures for disease prevention include number one, pigs must be grown in enclosed spaces with hygienic conditions. The microclimate should be kept in check and their well-being isolated from landfills or areas populated with other swine or wild boars. Number two, 
Farmers must work closely with veterinarians to prevent diseases, infections, and other health problems which occur in pig farms. Number three, new stock should be purchased only from sanitary approved holding accompanied by official documents. Number four, only clean feed and water must be administered to the pigs and it should be administered in clean feeding troughs and watering troughs. The last one, number five, the veterinary must be notified immediately if any sign of disease or mortality occurs in the farm. So farmers, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and watching. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, kindly subscribe and do not end the notification button so that we can be able to do this together next week. If you have any question or if you have any comment, please drop it in the comment section. And thank you. Let's meet right here, same time next week.